Hi there, welcome to Proven Cures. I'm your host, Sarah McLeod. Today is Wednesday, October 16th, 2019. And I am doing this video in response to a request for information, um, the latest clinical research to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, better known as ADHD. Um, during my research, I also found out that just so happens that October is considered um, ADHD National Awareness Month. Um, so it's pretty awesome that this person asked for this information at this time. And it's even more awesome that the information I found was actually published this year, February of 2019. The study I'm going to share is called Blood Levels of Trace Elements in Children with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder Results from a Case Control Study. The study was conducted at the Children's Hospital in Zhejiang Province in China. I may have mispronounced that because English is my first language. I'm just trying my best with this. Um, the study was published in a journal called Biological Trace Element Research. And like I said, it was published in February of 2019. So this is all new information. And um, uh, based on my understanding, current drugs that are being given, psychiatric drugs that are being um, given to children who are diagnosed with ADHD actually leaves those ch tend to leave those children um, in an almost comatose, awake but comatose state because um, they're essentially like forcing the children, forcing their minds to slow down so that they're able to concentrate and not flip from one thing to the next and what parents are noticing is that their children slow down almost too much to where it's a little bit frightening for them um those parents also may sympathize or at least one of the parents may sympathize with the child's symptom because during my research i found that nine times out of ten if you're nine, when i say nine times out of ten I, i'm just saying that rhetorically. I'm not saying that because I know 90% of the time, okay? Scientifically, I'm not saying it like that. But what I found is that majority of the time when a child has ADHD, one of the parents also suffer with that as a child. And a lot of times they don't outgrow it. They just learn to manage it. Um, and a lot of times the symptoms are misinterpreted by people in the lives of the adult. They might see the adult as being selfish, narcissistic, um, only able to listen to themselves, not able to share, when in fact they are suffering from a zinc deficiency that is classified as attention deficit disorder. So I'm going to share the results of this study with you. It, it'll be pretty quickly, pretty fast. Um, the study compared 419 children between the ages of 8 and 10 years old who were diagnosed with ADHD to 395 children who were not diagnosed with ADHD with, of that same age range. And the children were all given blood tests to, to check on trace elements in their system of zinc, copper, iron, magnesium, and lead to see if, um, if they were within the normal ranges. And I will tell you that of all of the elements they were tested for, all of the tests came back normal except for the zinc levels. Lower zinc levels and the number of out of normal ranges were found in children with ADHD when compared with the normal control group. Um, there was also no difference when adjusting for BMI, um, body mass index, or weight. So that means if one child with ADHD happened to be of average weight and another child happened to be heavy and another child happened to be thin, all of those children still suffered from a zinc deficiency that is correlated to having ADHD with this study. Also, they were given um, scales. 
when I see when I say scales, I'm talking about questionnaires that are usually administ administered on a psychiatric level. This was done in China, so I don't know if this psychiatric scale is used in the U.S. or if it's used in Europe. It's called SNAP-4 rating scores, and it w it was also used to determine whether or not these the parents of these children consider them to be inattentive. So it was used as a diagnostic tool to determine whether or not they had ADHD. Okay, so basically, bottom line is, the children with ADHD had pronounced lower amounts of zinc in their bodies. So you might be thinking now, well, that's nice to know, but how much zinc does my child need to uh, get their recommended daily allowances or yeah, the recommended daily allowances. So the recommended daily uh, dietary allowance that I pulled up is actually published by the Office of Dietary Supplements of the National Institutes of Health in the United States. Okay, so this is, this can be found. I, I would like to show you my computer. I don't know how well you can see it, but I'm going to try and show it to you. Okay before I read out what the zinc allowances are. Okay, so you can, you see that? This is where I'm pulling the information from when I tell you what the, the normal amount of zinc should be uh, for a child's age range. And you can go out and buy the children's or if this is or if you're following this or if you're listening to me because you are an adult who suffers from this disorder i'm also going to give you the daily allowance for adults as well so you can try it for yourself if you want to avoid either self-medicating because adults do that right self-medicate with alcohol or drugs or whatever or you want to avoid uh psychiatric meds okay so for ages zero to six months for boys and girls the recommended dietary allowance of zinc is two milligrams ages seven to twelve months for both boys and girls actually seven months up to three years of age for boys and girls the dietary zinc allowance is three milligrams for ages four to eight for boys and girls the amount is five milligrams for ages 9 to 13, the amount is 8 milligrams for both sexes as well. Um, for the ages of 4 to 18, 14 to 18, those teen years, males are to have 11 milligrams of zinc, females 9 milligrams of zinc, pregnant females 12 milligrams of zinc, lactating females 13 milligrams of zinc. We all know uh, teenagers get pregnant, so let's not say, oh, what are you telling me that for? Because it's actually here on the NIH website, so it's a real, very real thing. Teenagers have children. Um, and for adults 19 years of age and older, males need 11 milligrams of zinc, females 8 milligrams of zinc, pregnant women 11 milligrams of, of zinc, and lactating women 12 milligrams of zinc. So that should help you. You can just get the dietary supplement over the counter. Um, and if you do choose to do this, let me know how it works out for you. Um, leave me a comment. Please like, share, subscribe to this vid to this channel. And um, if you have any further questions, my email is provencures at gmail.com. I am proven underscore cures. I believe it's under proven underscore cures on IG if you want to follow me there. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.